Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's uh, morning prayer. Today is Monday, the 7th of December. I trust that you've had a wonderful weekend. You've uh, at least a peaceful, maybe restful one, and a joyful one in the Lord yesterday. Um, whether you were able to join us in the building or online, we trust that somehow the Lord was able to speak to you and to encourage you and to give you his grace to remind you of his presence another day another week and uh, and so we come to entrust the day and of course the whole week to the Lord let's pray <clears throat> O Lord open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise reveal among us the light of your presence that we may behold your power and glory Blessed are you, sovereign God of all, to you be praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will that the world may rejoice and give you peace praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and all that fills it, the world, the compass of the world, and all who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and set it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, or who can rise up in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up their soul to an idol, nor sworn an oath to a lie. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your, ha lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord who is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And our collect, our Advent collect. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And our psalm for this morning is Psalm 44. Psalm 44. Psalm 44. Psalm 44, we have heard with our ears, O God, our ancestors have told us what you did in their days, in days long ago. With your hand, you drove out the nations and planted our ancestors. You crushed the peoples and made our ancestors flourish. It was not by their sword that they won the land, nor did their arm bring them victory. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face 
for you love them. You are my king and my God who decrees victories for Jacob. Through you, we push back our enemies. Through your name, we trample our foes. I do not trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory. But you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame. In God, we make our boast all day long, and we will praise your name forever. But now you have rejected and humbled us. You no longer go out with our armies. You have made us retreat before the enemy, and our adversaries have plundered us. You gave us up to be devoured like sheep and have scattered us among the nations. You sold your people for a pittance, gaining nothing for their sale. You have made us a reproach to our neighbors, the scorn and derision of those around us. You have made us a byword among the nations. The peoples shake their heads at us. I live in disgrace all day long, and my face is covered with shame. At the taunts of those who reproach and revile me because of the enemy, who is bent on revenge. All this came upon us, though we had not forgot, forgotten you, we had not been false to your covenant. Our hearts had not turned back, our feet had not strayed from your path, but you crushed us and made us a horn for jackals. You, you cornered us with, your, with the, you covered us with the deep darkness. It, if we had forgotten the name of our God or spread out our hands to a foreign God, would not God have discovered it since he knows the secrets of the heart? Yet for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Awake, Lord, why do you sleep? Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget your, our misery and oppression. We are brought down to the dust, but our bodies cling to the ground. Rise up and help us. Rescue us because of your unfailing love. Amen. So it's a psalm. It, 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 there, is, there is a sense, the first bit of the psalm is a, a re, reminiscent, as it were, of, of the days of old, long ago, when, when God used to work wonderful things among the people. We are told this by our ancestors in times past. God, that you were a God who acted. You were a God who did amazing feats. You were a God who did miracles. You, you did it in the past, yes? But now, verse 9, but now you have rejected us and humbled us and you no longer go with our armies. Now we're losing the battle. Now we seem to be in a rut and we can't seem to get out. Now things are not what they used to be. Now we are not experiencing what our ancestors told us about. Our ancestors tell us about this God who delivered and this God who is great and so forth. Now we are not experiencing that. And so we feel that you have rejected us, God. We feel that there is... Uh, you, you're not coming to our help anymore. And so, but we don't know why, because if, for, for all ten, intents and purposes, we have been following your law. We have been obedient to you. We have done what you said. And yet you have allowed us to be overtaken by foreigners, by the enemy, the enemy who has come in and infiltrated our land and is destroying our, your people. And so wake up, God. <laughs> I, love, I love when the psalmist speaks like this to God. It's like, you know, stop sleeping. Get out of your slumber, God. Come on, do something. Uh, why are you hiding your face? <laughs> it's just a minute. You just imagine talking to God like this. Anyway, um, let's read the first. Let's do the first, um, the first meditation. The psalmist remembers the times of the ancestors long ago in ages past as a period of national flourishing. 
We have a direct link to the mighty deeds of the past because they were the exploits, not of our ancestors, but of God himself. And that God is still with us. Christians should never look at church history as if it contains some great race of heroes that has vanished irretrievably. Their God is still our God. Nor should we look at earlier times of spiritual ministry in our own lives and think that we'll never be capable of that again. You weren't capable of it the first time and it was because it, it was God and it is still God who is there. And then it's just a reminder. There are times in our own personal lives when we have experienced amazing miracles of God in our lives. We, we didn't know how we were going to get out of that situation and God somehow got us out and we forget those things and now we are in a rut and we feel wait a minute God you did it years ago you did it 10 years ago you did it whenever and now where are you and we feel that way sometimes but God is still here God hasn't gone anywhere it's that trust that we need isn't it oh God our help in ages past you are still with us now we thank you that you are eternal, unchanging in your person, character, and attributes. And let me remember that with excited anticipation for the things you will be doing today in my life and through me. Amen. All right, our New Testament reading. We are in a different New Testament reading this morning. We're starting a new book of the New Testament. And that book is 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 is our first reading this morning. We are in Thessalonians this time. We finished the great book of Revelation. And now I've taken on another great book. Uh, Thessalonians, which is different. Very different, as you will see. Okay. First Thessalonians chapter 1 is only 10 verses. Let's read. Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake, you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you welcomed and welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your love in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turned from God to, to God. They tell how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Amen. So, uh, Thessalonians, uh, first Thessalonians, uh, sisters and brothers, is probably the very first letter that Paul wrote. <clears throat> it is there with Galatians. <clears throat> it's, it's either first Thessalonians or Galatians. Those are the two that are sort of rivaling each other. If uh, one is one is before the other, we're not sure. But um, but first Thessalonians is one of the early letters, and a lot of the themes that Paul later developed in his, in his later letters, he will touch on a lot of these themes in 1 Thessalonians, as it were, just to give you some idea. So he talks about 
the Thessalonians' faith, the believers. And, and, and he has high praise for these people as, as a church. So he, he talks about how they, how they forsake idols and they turn away from idols and turn to the living and true God. Uh, this is one of their characteristics, one of their traits. And they did this among suffering and persecution. Um, they, it, it wasn't all easy for the Thessalonian Christians. Um, they, were, they, they encountered suffering, but they rejected idols. They turned away from false gods, despite the suffering, despite their persecution, and turned to Christ. And notice Paul says, to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised, raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Notice, Jesus not only rescues us from our sins, he rescues us from the coming wrath. That is, he rescues us from God's own judgment. This is something that we need to remember. Jesus rescues us from the enemy, the devil, but he also rescues us from God. <laughs> he rescues us from God's wrath, God's judgment upon sin. Uh, 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 first, going back up to the first bit, Paul says, we always thank God for you and we continually mention you in our prayers. He's talking, we here, he said, is Timothy, Paul, and, and Silas. Because Paul is writing on behalf of all three. And, and, you know, this is powerful stuff. Paul is saying to this church, we are always mentioning you in our prayers. Now, to mention you in our prayers doesn't mean I, I, I'm praying about specific things. I simply mention you. Lord, remember the Christians in Thessalonica. Lord, remember those wonderful people, the Thessalonians. Just mention you. We always mention you in our prayers. We remember before God your work produced by faith. Your labor prompted by love and your endurance inspired by hope. Faith, hope, and love. Later, Paul is going to develop these themes in Corinthians, to the Corinthian letters in 1 Corinthians. But now he's just, he's just touching on them. He says, we are, we are grateful to you believers for your, for your faith that is produced by, by your work, which is produced by the faith that you have. The work you do, the service you do, you, you, you get, is produced by the faith that you have in God. Your labor that, that, that's a different word. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's, one is service, but one is labor. That is the, the work that you do outside in the community. That work produced, prompted by love. Love. Love is what drove you or drives you to, to serve the community. Uh, faith is what, uh, is what prompts you or... or, 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 or inspires you, that's the word I'm looking for, inspires your faith, inspires you to give service to God, to, to give worship to God. But love prompts you to serve one another, to labor for the love, for the, for the well-being of each other and hope. Your endurance inspired by hope, endurance, perseverance, Despite your suffering, despite what you're going through, you have hope. You are enduring in that hope in that, that is in Jesus Christ, in our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice our hope, your hope is in Jesus Christ. It's not in anything else. The hope is built on Jesus Christ. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. So Paul says, your endurance is inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. I, 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 I must stop there. But this is faith, hope, and love. These are the three things. Paul is going to develop them more, but here he's given a taste of it. These are, do we have those three things, sisters and brothers? Faith, faith to worship God. Uh, faith that, that, uh, that, that is produced through 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 work, through worship, through service, service, and 
love, love for others, love to, to, to labor and work to serve others, and hope, an endurance that is inspired by hope, not giving up, not throwing in the towel and saying, I quit. No, despite the suffering, despite the persecution, endure, persevere, because hope is coming in Jesus Christ. That is, that is a message for today, sisters and brothers. Let's, uh, let's reflect on that from First Thessalonians. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful for another day. We pray, Lord, that you'll give us this faith, hope, and love. Lord, we, we cannot live without these three. Lord, we ask for this faith that inspires us to serve you. The love that prompts us to serve others. And the hope that we have in Jesus Christ that no matter what today brings, tomorrow will be better. Because Jesus is still alive. And our hope is not in tomorrow. Our hope is in him. Our hope is in you. Our Lord Jesus Christ. And so may we build that hope today on you, even as we don't know what today is going to bring, much less the whole of this week or the rest of this month or year. But Lord, we need, we, 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 we need that, this hope, this hope to endure, to persevere. No matter what comes, not to throw in the towel, not to give in, not to give up but to keep hoping, keep our eyes firmly on Jesus, fixed on the finishing line, as it were. The, the, the fix our eyes on Jesus, the, the author, the beginning and the end, the, the alpha, the omega, the first and the last. Lord, and so help us, we pray, even as these Christians endured in the faith, despite suffering, despite persecution help us to endure as well with hope knowing that whatever today whatever is happening today it will not last forever because in Jesus Christ there is always always hope there's always a God who is coming to our rescue who will rescue us not only from our sins and from Satan and from ourself but he even comes to rescue us from the wrath of God himself. And we give you thanks, Lord, for this Jesus. A Jesus who we, at this time of year, we, we, we get excited because we are expecting him to be born, as it were, again, in our lives, in our hearts, even as he was born 2,000 years ago in a manger. And so, Lord, we pray for those who, who are in this world, who have never experienced this birth of Christ in their hearts. They, they see Christmas come year in and year out, but they have never experienced the Savior being born in their lives. Lord, we pray for those people this morning specifically. And even as we, as we get closer to Christmas, Lord, my prayer for the world my prayer for this community, my prayer for Newham, my prayer for the UK, my prayer for Europe. Lord, my prayer for Europe, a, a place that has so strayed from you, uh, a, a, a geographical location that once uh, had its foundation in your word, have so neglected it and abandoned it. I, my prayer for Europe is that people will experience the birth of the Savior in their lives this year. Even as we come nearer to the celebrating the actual birth, we pray for spiritual birth, that Christ be born in the hearts of all those who are sinners, all those who have rejected him, again in this European countries. And of course, in our world, we bring this to you this morning. And Lord, we, we bring our day to you and all those whom you have 
laid on our hearts to mention this morning. We mention them to you, Lord. We don't, we, Lord, we don't know all their needs and we don't know all their concerns, but we, we know, Lord, that they've asked us to pray. And so we mention them to you this morning. We remember in your mercy, Leah. We remember in your mercy, Miriam. Remember in your mercy, uh, Glennis and, and Ambrose and the family, even now, remember in your mercy, Glennis's mom, Vida in Grenada. Remember, Lord, these, this family in your mercy today, this week, we pray. Remember in your mercy, Maxine's sister, Constance, and her son, Michael, in Canada. Remember in your mercy, Dorothea and John, and uh, remember Thavan and his wife, Salima, and mom, Selvi, Auntie Janie, and her family. Remember, Lord, in your mercy, Jean and Walter, and Monica, Bruce and Neve, and remember, Lord, in your mercy, Glennis and Claire, and Bob up in Upminster, and little Ronnie. Lord, remember these in your mercy. Remember Dolly this morning. Remember Dolly and remember, Lord, we pray. In your mercy, Desmond and that family as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for these, your children. We ask, Lord, that you'll intervene in their lives and bring them the love, the faith, the hope in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Amen. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Amen. Be with us, Lord, in all our prayers and direct our way toward the attainment of salvation, that among the changes and chances of this mortal life, we may always be defended by your gracious help through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and his all-sufficient grace today, sisters and brothers. Amen. Have a blessed day, one and all.